delighted to have David McSherry on the Mind, Body, Soul podcast this evening. David actually did an interview with me a couple of years ago and it got lots of traction, lots of interest um, talking about his time with Connacht in rugby, which had some massive uh, victories. I remember seeing uh, you putting in a very big hit on Harry Nordicky one day, Dave, and I was thinking, Jesus, it'd be good to get him back playing for Temple Oak Sing Street Sunday, throwing his way about. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk all about that. And I know you were played for the Irish Wolfhounds and you got on to the, the Irish squad for some, some training camps as well. So like really interested to talk to you about that. But I know that since your rugby, uh, since you've moved on from your rugby career, you've gone into business. And I'm really interested just to talk about the sort of the drive that you know, that it takes for rugby, that it takes to uh, advance through uh, rugby, because I know you were in Temple Oak College and it wouldn't be, let's say, one of the, the bigger teams that was winning, like, you know, Leinster Senior Cups all the time. So that that in itself probably meant that you have to push a bit harder to get noticed. So does that drive kind of follow you into the business space? And just to have a chat with you around that. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd be happy to, happy to cover all of that. Um, kind of learned a lot over the last kind of, five or six months now that we've been in this business, I've, I've learned, a, learned a fair amount. And I guess from, from my end, yeah, I think a lot of, the, a lot of what I learned from, from my rugby career and uh, even from playing Gaelic with yourself uh, mm. up through the years does, does follow into, into sport. Um, so I can definitely cover over some of, the, some, some of that. But um, yeah, um, yeah, it's been, been a long time since we played uh, Gaelic, <laughs> Gaelic together. And I know we only live we only live up the road from each other now, so it's funny that we're both back in uh, back back where back at home base, man. I'm telling you, it'd be good to link up again at some point. But uh, get get me putting some balls into you there and full forward, make you look good. <laughs> um, come here. So so um, like going back to your to your school days, I suppose, and you know getting noticed by Leinster originally, like. Did you, did, when you were in Temple Oak, did you feel like that was going to be tough to get noticed? Or did, how did you like sort of use that or work that to, to, to make sure that you were getting in front of the right people and, and putting in those performances to get you noticed? Um, yeah, I guess uh, at that stage, like I said, Temple Oak probably wouldn't be known as one of the, the kind of strongholds or whatever for rugby. But uh, I just had, I had very good coaches uh, who I suppose kind of instilled that belief. And I, I always felt like, you know, if, if I just kept playing at a consistently good level, you would, you would kind of get picked up. And uh, mm. I had, I had a couple of injuries and stuff like that, which didn't help along the way, but no, I had, I had brilliant coaches helping me along. And um, I guess when the trials and stuff came along, I just, they, they were in my ear telling me, you know, what I need to do. Um, you know, I suppose just to not go back into your shell and really, really just give it a good crack. And mm. yes, I, I, I was lucky. I was lucky in that uh, I did get picked up and there was, I think the year, that um, the year that I went for trials, there was a there was a, I think a trip over um, over to South Africa. There was mm -hmm. a schools trip, and uh, I just about got onto that, and uh, that gave me a good chance to kind of be be seen in front of the scouts and everything. So um, it just kind of, I, I guess after that, it it, it worked in my favour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, and uh, I suppose you know any any little tips for those trials? Did you put on a flashy pair of uh, socks or anything, or was there any tactics going on around that? Uh, well, I think I was the only I was the only person from Temple who got the trials, so uh, I had to rock up uh, by myself when the rest of them all had a, had a crew of friends with them. So uh, yeah, no, look, it was it, it was tough at the time, like, but uh, no, we. I remember I remember I remember just thinking to myself, just have to you know do whatever you can to to um, to stand out, and you know I think luckily I think I was able to do that on the pitch rather than down with a flashy pair of boots. But uh, yeah, yeah, know, it was yeah, no, and a lot of the lads who who were at those trials now have gone on and done very well either in rugby or in business circles as well. So um, you bump into the same people um, numerous times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is which is great, and I and I suppose then I I know you went, didn't you play in the under twenty World Cup and things like this? Because I remember uh, hearing that you you, you kind of seen the, how much the the New Zealanders that you could potentially be coming up against were weighing in at, and you thought, Jesus, yeah. I might I might have to order a pizza in here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the the um the tour we went on was uh, Argentina, and uh, yeah the. The, some of the some of the lads I suppose that would have been on that tour would have been the likes of Julian Savea and uh, even to this day just to remember just how good they were uh, at that stage. But uh, no, like that uh, that tour, I got back from a couple of injuries and just about made it onto that tour. And again, um, that was a good a, a good a good opportunity for me to kind of put myself um, in the spotlight a little bit. And mm. um, 
I probably, I think the year leading up to that, I had had a good few injuries and I didn't, I, I missed out on the Leinster Academy. I probably hadn't played enough rugby, um, but I went on and played a couple of good years up at UCD and um, a couple of the Connacht scouts came looking and yeah, I, I, I got down for kind of, I think it was a kind of a development contract with, with Connacht initially and uh, managed to do enough on that to convince them to give me a, a two-year contract. So mm-hmm. um, that was how it all, that was all, uh, I suppose, how it came about, yeah. Yeah, and just kept plugging away. And like, so you were part of that Connacht team as well that had the massive result there in Be Ritz. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had some good, uh, we had some really good results, I suppose, through those early years uh, when I was back 2021. 20, and um, I suppose, yeah, we some of those French trips were some of our most fun ones. Um, the Toulouse trip was definitely a standout in the Be Ritz. Sorry, Toulouse, was it? It was Toulouse. Yeah. Toulouse away, yeah, that was one of, that was, I suppose, um, uh, we had Pat Lamb as our coach at the time and it was probably a big turning point for that team that w- we could go away and get those big results and that team went on to do so well obviously um, my final year they managed to get a, to get the, the Pro 14 title so mm. um, I think that was a big turning point and uh, yeah obviously Pat Lamb who's gone on and done so much good stuff now as well with Bristol and, and with Connacht um, at the time um, yeah we, we just had a really really good group there and I, I think I moved down to, the, to Connacht at, the, at just about the right time mm, mm, yeah that was a real like that team came on so much in your, your couple of years there that must have been a really nice way as well at, at, to see that happen then at the end I remember there was another Templog Sing Street man had a great season Nee had a great season that year yeah. out on the wing as well yeah absolutely yeah. yeah he was flying over for tries so uh, yeah no, that, that team was just a really really close knit group of lads as well uh, everyone worked really, really hard for each other, and I was just delighted that, uh, yeah, for for my final year, I was able to come away with you know a, a medal, a Pro 14 medal, which I think probably when I moved down to Connacht, we were we were quite far away from that. So, mm. um, yeah, really, really good finish to I suppose my rugby career. Yeah, excellent. And so branching from rugby then into uh, into business, I wanted just because you mentioned Pat Lamb there, like so he would have been would be seen to have quite a unique leadership style, a very strong leadership style. So. Like coming up through rugby, would you have learned a lot about, I suppose, leadership styles from the coaches and the managers that you encountered? And has that stood to you then in business? Yeah, um, I, I think every coach has a little bit of a different approach. And uh, what Pat brought was just a very, uh, I suppose, you know, we needed some guidance that 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 kind of team. You know, we hadn't won we hadn't won medals or anything like that, so we probably just needed. Uh, you know that bit of guidance, and we had we had uh, we had some players with massive experience as well, which which helped that. And he kind of empowered those guys to kind of make decisions and stuff as well. But mm-hmm. Pat was just very, um, you know, he had his way, and you you kind of quickly learned that that was the right way to go about yeah. things. And uh, now, uh, look, I think what 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 was tough initially for us to kind of get used to with Pat was just you know he didn't want us kicking the ball away, you mm-hmm. know. And we weren't used to, you know, holding the ball for that many phases. But he had done all his homework on, you know, things like, you know, the percentages. Uh, you know, if we kick the ball away, this is how many points we generally concede. Uh, whereas if we hold on to the ball for, you know, this many phases, uh, well, we we go on and score this much or whatever. So he, he was just very stats heavy. And, you know, things like training sessions, like he had everything started out, you know, your passing, mm-hmm. your accuracy, of all your passes, your meters uh, ran. So there was no hiding. And I think that's what we needed. We needed that kind of tough, uh, mm. tough approach. And uh, there just was no hiding at all. Um, and, and again, when I moved down to Connacht initially, that definitely, like, it just went up a notch with, with, with uh, Pat and Eric, who gave me my break as well, uh, was, was brilliant. So, um, yeah, I learned a huge amount from those two. And mm. yeah, I suppose I, I definitely, I definitely know, I didn't see myself, um, having a few staff members as quickly as I have here. So uh, I've, I've definitely tried to, yeah, replicate some parts of what I've Yeah, done. yeah. So you're measuring them as well, making sure every second's accounted <laughs> for. <laughs> so come here. Yeah, let's talk about um, hot chips. I'm seeing them everywhere. Uh, yeah. I've tried them. Very tasty, good product. Um, so I have to say now, Dave, I have to do my due diligence as a health coach here and say yeah. to be enjoyed as part of a healthy, balanced diet, right? But why don't you tell us a bit about how the business and how it's all it's all taken off from what you do to the expansion over the last, you know, the last year? Yeah, so I guess I just felt like it was a little bit of an opportunity. Uh, I studied, I went away, studied business management and entrepreneurship uh, in Sydney, Australia, and uh 
yeah, I traveled for a couple of months before I moved to Sydney as well. And uh, I guess I just, it, it, I was always looking out for opportunities, things mm. that I, I, I felt like I was probably always going to come back to Ireland. Um, you know, just in terms of business, uh, you know, Ireland is great. There's so many people who want to help you. The structures are really, really good here. And obviously my family and stuff are here as well. So uh, I was looking out for opportunities the whole time. And I just, I, I pretty much just felt like there was an opportunity for, you know, a really good cookie here. Uh, like we all know the donuts took off a couple of years back. Mm. And, uh, the cookies hadn't really taken off here, but they had in the likes of New York and Australia and, and even London lately as well. So um, I felt like there was a bit of an opportunity there. And when I got back, uh, I just went to work on a recipe uh, of a cookie style that I really, really liked. And uh, yeah, I spent a few months trialing on myself. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Loading. Uh, and the others, yeah, definitely that first lockdown. That was pretty much all I did. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, that a couple of months of that and uh, getting my friends and family to, tr to trial it. But felt like I had a good product there. And uh, after that, went around pitching to couple of cafes and uh yeah like that <laughs> again funny like i was thinking about it the other day like one of the first cafes after me you know trialing this recipe for a few months uh, one of the first cafes i went to uh told me that <laughs> the, the woman told me that uh she asked me had they been cooked uh, a day or two before because they tasted stale and <laughs> i was like fuck i've wasted i've wasted my last six months uh, with this recipe uh <laughs> but no like oh, you're always going to get some of that and uh yeah. No, I suppose I just had to stay strong with it. I, I, and I, I felt like I did have something that, you know, tasted really good there. And that was backed up by, you know, a couple more cafe owners, you know, saying they liked it and even my uh, my friends and stuff as well. So, um, yeah, there's always there's always going to be a little bit of that. Like, but, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's back, back yourself that, that you know, um, that you have something good there. Yeah, yeah, I, I whipped up a batch here the other day and uh, I, I slightly, you know, this is all my fault, but I took my eye off them, but I, I liked them. They were on the crispy side, but yeah. uh, my sister came in to me. She goes, they're good, Deck, but uh, you shouldn't have let dad cook them. He overdid them. And it was me, like, I was like, yeah, yeah. I think that's what people are kind of enjoying is that, uh, you know, you, you might buy them a couple of times before you perfect them and people want people enjoy that process and like the the... The baking, I suppose, the, the annoying parts of baking is the, the cleanup and maybe going around buying all the ingredients and everything. And uh, with this, I suppose, we try and make it a little bit more, uh, we take the good parts of baking, but maybe take, uh, we take away some of the bad parts as well. Some so. of the hassle, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing. And you have to try and stop yourself nibbling on the cookie dough before they've gone in the oven as well. So, well, um, I stop that every day. So. <laughs> so, you know, like you mentioned business and entrepreneurship, like, I know even just from growing up with you and Colin, like you lads were like filming yourselves doing keepies uppies and all when that wasn't even really, that was just really very much at the start of the trend, you know? And so for me, I always saw you guys as, as quite entrepreneurial or creative, you know? And is that something you've always had in you or like when, when did the drive for that to go and do that course come from? Um, I guess I worked over in Australia in a startup and I had dipped my toe into a couple of different businesses over there to see what I like. Because when I finished rugby, I, you know, I didn't have a degree behind me, but more so I didn't really have that much job experience. Uh, and I, I, I dipped my toe into a bit of property for a while, a couple of different jobs over in Sydney. And the one that I ended up really, really enjoying as part of my course, I had to do a 12 week placement each year uh, in a startup or, or a business. But mm -hmm. um, the one I'd done in a startup, I really enjoyed and I just liked the whole kind of, uh, I don't know, it, it was what, what you kind of put into it, you get out. And it kind of was very down to your own drive. And, and mm. um, that is same same as sport. Like you kind of, uh, I, I, guess, I guess for me, like I just, I, I just really liked that, you know, okay, if I put in more hours into this, you know, I'm going to get more out of it and I'm going to yeah. elevate myself above someone else, you know. So that was kind of, uh, that was where that kind of spark kind of came from. And then, when I started the course, I really enjoyed that as well. And I had done, I had done three years in arts and I, in UCD and I, I had started the course again, three, three years straight. So all right, all right. my first, my first college uh, outing didn't go well at all. And I just didn't really have an interest in what I was doing, but mm. with this, I found myself really enjoying it. And, you know, we had business, uh, business speakers come in and talk about, you know, their businesses that set, they set up and stuff. So, uh, just really enjoyed that side of things. And uh, yeah, it didn't feel like a chore at all um, in that job. Uh, and it was very, a lot of scope to be creative. And like I said, like 
growing up, I always felt like, yeah, I kind of liked um, kind of editing videos, that kind of style of, uh, side of things. And uh, the cookies, like, that wasn't something that I always said, I you know I want to be like, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't remember you talking about that when we were younger, yeah. all right. <laughs> no, but, but it does, it does have a lot of scope to be creative in it. And yeah, uh, that's the kind of side of it that I like. Um, and then, yeah, you just find people for, for everything that I'm not good at. I try and find someone who can help me out. And um, luckily, Ireland has been great for that. It's like yeah. A lot of people are, are willing to help you. Yeah, and that's that's interesting. I want to talk to you about that, putting the right team together. Like, so, you know, what what is your mindset around that? And like, yeah, how have you managed that? And has that been, has that brought with it challenges? Yeah, like, I think, uh, I think, just putting yourself out there is one of the biggest things that I've learned. Like if you don't ask, you won't get it. And that I've said, I have so many examples of that since I started. Uh, and and I, I'm i not good on certain areas, but you have to find someone who is good at that. And luckily in Ireland, like I said, you're never far away from asking someone who knows mm. someone who can help you. Mm. And, uh, that's where I've been extremely lucky. But even even things like LinkedIn, I didn't, I didn't, Put much put put much thought into LinkedIn, but just there before New Year's, I was trying to figure out how we scale this business a little bit. And uh, I was listening to a podcast um, on how I built this. It's called, and uh, it he interviews you know people who have been really successful in business around the world. And uh, there was a lady called Kathleen King on it, and uh, mm. she sold her cookie business for five hundred million in two thousand eight. Wow. And uh, she lives in New York and uh, I listened to her story and she just seemed like a super nice person, normal person. And uh, I just chanced my arm and sent her a message on LinkedIn and told her about where my company is at. And, uh, you know, we were, we were still very, very small and we still are very small, obviously, especially in her mind. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I just chanced my arm and told her about where our company is at and uh, said that we were wondering how we how we best scaled this business and mm-hmm. uh, I was just wondering if I could have a quick chat with you and she saw the message later on that day and got back and she I chatted to her for a full hour over a, a chat like this on New Year's Day uh, she spent a full just... hour and uh, went through my business from the very beginning mm. and uh, told told me like I learned this I learned so much from that so that was just another example of something you just you know chance your arm with those kind of things and yeah you never know what will happen. So uh, I, I took a huge amount from that. Like it was around it was around a year's learning in in an hour, and she's yeah. just been through it all. And that's one of the biggest things I've learned is that you know, um, lean on people who have more experience than you because they've just been through it all. And uh, for someone like me who you know I'm only getting started in this, uh, you can just pick up so much f- from those people. So yeah, yeah. Uh, such good advice. I actually remember you posted that on LinkedIn about her. Yeah, and that was. So, so generous to give up her time like and I, I think there's there's a couple of things I take from that is like you just chancing it and asking because some people shy away from even the thought of not getting responded to or getting a no and I mean once you realize that the worst thing that can happen is that and that yeah. that's not that bad it's yeah. like why not you know and then something that can just the amount of stuff that can come from a simple little email or just reaching out yeah. to people I think that's incredible and then just from her side I think it's the kindness to give back eventually and you know I'm sure you'll sure you've done it you know through sport you get to, you've done like interviews with me you've been generous with your time and like I think and I heard actually about Owen Farrell the English player doing a like a little get together with Johnny Cooper having a coffee with them dropping them back to the airport after the Dublin players had gone over to study how what it was like at Saracens or something like this you know I'm giving them time and sitting and having a coffee and I love hearing stories like that yeah um, and like I suppose yeah I suppose it'd just be it, like in terms of your own uh, company and the growth there, you're doing a lot on social media. So would you be doing a bit of that yourself or do you have a team then driving that of, of talented individuals? You've got in, Dave, to do that. Uh, yeah, I guess um, in, in, the first, in the first couple of months there, I've been, I was fairly heavily on production. So uh, covered in cookie dough. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess in, in, I didn't have a huge amount of time to put it into the different like I, I done a bit on whatever Instagram and stuff like that but I've been really lucky in that a couple of the students from Smurfit Business School are, are actually doing a lot of our uh, oh, at the moment and I think um, they've been brilliant like really really good and uh, they were looking for I think as they were looking for a bit of experience and um, yeah so they've been a massive help so um, that again you know that just came about through them messaging me on, online and 
I needed the help. Like I was fairly flat out with other things at the moment. So um, that's been a, a massive help and they've all been really, really good in helping grow the business. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think in terms of uh, like putting yourself, putting yourself under like pressure situations, like I kind of, you juggle a lot, a lot of different things when mm-hmm. you start your own business, you juggle so many different things. Um, but I've tried to, through all of this, just try to say yes to as many things as I can and put yourself in. That's another, I suppose, one of those things from sport as well. Just put yourself in those pressure situations and, you know, you either, you find a way to make it happen. Like we've had, we've had it often now where we get an order, you know, uh, an, an order of cookies, you know, quite late on, you know, a certain day and, you know, you might not have the, the stock or whatever to do it, but you find a way to make it happen and, you mm-hmm. know, you, you drive around and, you figure it out and those kind of situations are, you know, that's, you know, whatever that is, 200, 300 extra cookies, another company, you know, more people, you know, posting about it. And um, those are the kind of ones that we've just tried to try say yes to as many things as possible. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the pressure environment. And uh, that's, you know, you'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That reminds me of a great book uh, called the pressure principle by a guy, Dave Allred, who worked with Johnny Wilkinson. It's this idea of getting in the ugly zone, but yeah. putting yourself in the ugly zone as much as possible till that almost becomes the norm and you sort of thrive on that. So you can see how you're doing all of that. Um, yeah. So like Dave, sorry, go on. A couple of times there where, uh, you know, we've been fairly overwhelmed thinking, have we taken on, you know, too much too soon with, you know, cafes or, you know, recently now home delivery and stuff but what well, like you the, the staff in there who i have are brilliant and they they are willing to you know they've said it from day one you know if we need to work for more hours we'll make mm. it happen because mm. we're, we're a growing business and now's the time to do it so you know i've been lucky at that that the staff have, have been you know they've gone over uh, overboard with, with that uh, side of things as well but um yeah like you said just throw yourself in and you know, you if you if you have to do it, you know, one thing that I have learned is if the people are relying on you, you'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah, and that yeah. can be a lot of late nights or whatever, but uh, now is the time to do it, and uh, there's nothing else going on at the moment anyway, so it's a good time. To, it's a good time to be busy. Yeah, and would you say like I know because your your dad has his own business as well and did, and you would have seen that growing up. Would that have had an influence on you? Would you say? Yeah, he's yeah, the he's... best critic of anyone I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, mm-hmm. doesn't, he doesn't stop, and uh, I feel lazy anytime I'm around him. So uh, that's a, definitely he, he just he just is another level. So yeah, uh, yeah, if that's one hundred percent. I just uh, I, I learned a huge amount from him growing up, and especially things like sports. Like you would have been up in the park with us. Uh, when know, he was hiding the rugby balls. Yeah, when he was hiding the rugby balls for the Gaelic balls. Good, good solid leecher man there. Um, so he, uh, yeah, but, but he would have, you know, he would have kept us out there for hours and hours, you know, uh, kicking balls over the bar yeah. or, you know, catching or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, he, um, he's he been a massive influence, yeah. Yeah, no better man, no better man. Um, so Dave, just to wrap up, like, because if you, people watching this and they'll be inspired by what you've done in, in sport and, and in business and how you've carried that forward, which is so like, yeah, have you got a couple of performance tips just in terms of getting the best out of yourself, like that you would, you've already given loads of them, but any sort of key key factors that you'd say to young aspiring entrepreneurs or not even young, but just to anybody in this field of sport or, uh, you know, in the entrepreneurial field as well? Yeah, I guess so. Obviously, we're so early into this that I feel like an idiot even talking about it because, you know, we're only four or five months into mm-hmm. it. Into mm. it itself. So we haven't really even achieved uh, a whole lot. You know, it's, we've made a good start, but the real, the real, I suppose, uh, the real test there will be in a year, two years time, I suppose, for our mm-hmm. business. But mm-hmm. uh, if, if I could give some advice on what I've learned so far is just it was massive roller coaster. And that's probably similar again to sport as well. There's huge highs and lows with it and things come out of nowhere and uh you know you're you're wondering how you're gonna you know pick yourself up from it or things just go wrong every single day with it but it's so addictive because you know the highs are are there with this and that's probably the most similar uh side of of things i find with um you know entrepreneurship and and, uh sport is that you know the highs keep you coming back and uh, a lot of the lows you know things will just happen every day and in terms of the business at the moment the oven will stop working you know uh, there'll be an issue on the supplier side and 
just constant headaches but you yeah. figure them out and you know those little those little wins you keep on having then when, when you do figure them out they keep you coming back and yeah I guess um I guess that's a big that's a big learning just picking yourself up and, and kind of having that next job mentality yeah um, that's something again that Pat Lam would have spoke about a lot just you know it's if it, whatever's happened you know you just have to move on with it and think about your next job and that's what I've tried to do with this um and at times it's at times it's tough because you you kind of you're wondering why why things keep on going wrong, but uh, yeah, it's just part of it. Like it's it's uh, it just happens every day. Something something will happen, and uh, so you just pick yourself up and and, and move on. And uh, that would probably be a bit the biggest learning that I've had mm. um, is you just have to take out the, uh, Kathleen King, the lady I mentioned earlier. She would have spoke a lot about taking the emotion out of things. Yeah, She's in her first venture she was way too emotionally attached to it. And, uh, you know, you can drag yourself down quite a lot with that when, when things go wrong, uh, but try and remove yourself from it and just wear the business hat and say, okay, what steps do I have to kind of take now to, to make this right again? And yeah, uh, that's probably important, you know, with something like this, you're, you're going to have people who are going to prefer, you know, other cookies, other cookie dough, just going to be people who, you know, flat up like that lady I mentioned earlier, who, who's, who thought the cookies tasted stale. So uh, just try and take that emotion. You can't yeah. take those things personally. And, you know, if you're appealing to the masses, which hopefully at the moment we are, that's the main thing. Yeah. I think not taking it personally definitely would help because what, like, I think what happens to people when you are in that sort of sphere where there are those highs and they can be really big highs, particularly in sport, <laughs> Yeah. And then there's almost that hot, like you want it again. It's like you want that fix of that. But then there's, yeah. there is a lot of down moments in sport as well. And I think it's, it's hard to know. Like, I'd be interested to get your opinion on it. Like, do you throw yourself fully into the highs or is there a little party that's like, okay, maybe I won't go too mad here because I know that, I don't know, it might sound a bit negative, but that there might be a low around the corner here. So I want to keep my feet a bit grounded through sort of consistency throughout, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 I think I think not getting carried away with the highs and kind of you know I think always setting the next goal as soon as you reach one you know you have the other one in sight. I think that's that's super important. Um, you know you don't want to pat yourself on the back too much. It's 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 important obviously to to kind of when you do hit a goal or something like that. It's important to kind of reflect on it and be happy. But then I think yeah you have to kind of always be thinking bigger with it. Um, mm you know, there's no point, there's, there's no point in, in kind of lingering around, uh, be, be, being happy with, with, with one kind of win or whatever. So, um, yeah, in, in that regard, I think you just have to keep setting yourself new goals and, uh, and keep pushing forward on it. And, uh, yeah, like we're, we're kind of at a stage now where we're just trying to figure out how to, how to scale our business. And we'll, we've kind of come up with a couple of, a couple of goals over the next couple of months that we want to hit and hopefully we'll be able to do it. But, um, yeah, like you said, there's always something around the corner to bring you bring you back in here. So we'll, we'll see what's what's coming next. Good stuff. And then just la last question: but best sporting moment and best business moment to date? Um, best sporting moment. Um, for, for for me, like I would have loved to have played a bit more in the year that uh, that Connacht won the the title. That was an amazing, uh, incredible achievement. Uh, I I missed out on the year through injury. But mm. even just seeing that, you know, like just seeing what it did for Galway and for the lads who I played a lot of rugby with, especially the more experienced lads who, who you know, John Muldoon and the likes. Yeah. That was just an incredible. And the week after in Galway, it was even more incredible. But uh, the um, that was a huge high. Probably the, the Toulouse game away was, was for me because I got to play the whole game. And yeah, uh, that was a massive, that was a massive one, certainly. And then the Wolfhounds getting my cap for the Wolfhounds. Uh, would have liked to have pushed on and, and get a cap for Ireland, but it didn't happen. And uh, happy, happy even that I got to play for the Wolfhounds. So yeah. that was all great. Uh, Business-wise, um, I guess uh, so far, um, you know, we had our first weekend there of home deliveries in Dublin. Mm. And, um, that was really, really good. And just seeing, uh, just seeing the orders come and flying in was amazing. Like uh, I was, like I said, that was that was me in my kitchen uh, over the first lockdown. So, uh, you know, just even seeing that kind of come in, that people from across Dublin were ordering it. And, you know, that was, that was I still find that mad. But uh, then I guess what else has been great for us? Yeah, just some of the, some of the big brands that we're working, working with at the moment, you know, places that I would have shopped in the whole time. And you walk in now and it's funny, like I live 
few minutes away from foam in Terranure mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's, you see people walking around with the with the, the cookie sleeves or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, that's, it's cool to see. So those would be some of the, um, and like the, the cafe owners have all been great that we're working with. So um, yeah, so I guess, I guess that's been, it's just been a few cool moments so far in it, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Well, look, Dave, so for people who want to find out a bit more about you, can you just let us know? Do you have a, I know you're active on Instagram, so maybe just let us know on the on Instagram and if you have a website or anything where, where people can find out more. Yeah, so the Instagram is Hotchip Dublin and then the uh, the website is www.hotchipdublin.com and that's where you can make the orders within Dublin at the moment for home delivery. And then all our products, uh, the cafe listings are on our website as well. And we're hoping to have a uh, nationwide delivery for the cookie dough soon as well. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can get it in every country or every county in, uh, in Ireland very soon as well. Very nice, man. I was just thinking when you're talking there, there'd probably be the demand for a high protein cookie at some point. And uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we have a we have a couple of uh, we have a couple of healthy options on the way, and a vegan option uh, pretty soon now as well, and a couple of new flavors. And yeah, down the line, like I would love to, I would love to do a couple of uh, a couple of different options that maybe the more uh, the more health minded person would be interested in. But yeah, well, it's yeah. great though, isn't it? Because the vegan, yeah, I think the vegan um, sort of wouldn't call it a movement, but just that that sort of way of eating is is definitely really taken off and more plant based yeah. and stuff. So that's yeah, really yeah, cool that you're just have lots of have, have lots of interest in that from uh, cafe owners and stuff at the moment. So uh, we're we're trialing that at the moment, and we'll get the packaging and stuff done, and then hopefully hopefully um, hopefully it'll be available in the next kind of month, I reckon. Brilliant. Oh, awesome. Right. Well, look, Dave, thanks a million for taking the time out to chat and no really looking forward to bringing, bringing your story to people. Yeah, no worries at all, Dave. Thanks for having me on.